That feels like a good one. Welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. I come to you from beautiful Lake Gunnersville. And if you can see behind me, all of this stuff is grass. It's freaking mads, dude. <laughs> so I wonder, let, let's reflect for a minute. What are we doing in this video? We're gonna flip some mats, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you kind of some tips and techniques that I think are like super nuanced. Like there's one thing that I really know how to do. I'm decent at fishing deep. I'm really good at fishing mats. Like I'll be non humble and I'll be that guy that like talks about himself a little bit. I'm good at fishing mats because I love to do it. It clicks with me. There's something about the intensity of the bite, dude. It, it just fits, dude. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, we're hopefully gonna catch the fish. I got a feeling we are. Like the mats are fresh, they're new, like the fish are just getting in them, it's perfect. But we're gonna go through some of the, the little kind of, I won't call them tips, but it's little things that you can do that is gonna up your punching game and catch you more fish because they're nuanced, they're subtle, and you can have a guy go over a stretch three times or three different boats go in front of you, and you can do some of this stuff, and you're gonna catch bass, and you're gonna catch bigger bass. So come along with me, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You can see, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be one of them kind of days. Salad shooter, I wish the salad bars were still open. I'd love that, that's sad. Hit that like and subscribe, let's go. And I broke my reel. Stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. Oh my gosh. Dude. Dude, I just like lifted up and that choker was there. Dude, look at that fish. Absolute punching. There's nothing but to look at that choker, dude. That is a monster. Let's get her back. Oh, go back. I didn't even set the hook on you. You just grabbed it. I love punching. Punching is awesome. That's what I should name this video. Guys, I'm just pitching. Um, it's a it's a gambler stinger. Got a couple that I uh, beat up right here. But um, one and a half, pitching some of this chop grass, pitching some of this sparse grass, and it's very early in the pitching by and the punching by, but they, they're just coming in, and that's when you catch your bigs, dude. And I love this kind of fishing, so I can do it for hours and hours and pick it apart, but it can be some of the most heartbreaking and rewarding. I've missed like four or five fish. I lost a four and a half, five pounder already, lost a couple others. They're biting the bait really funny, but golly, that, that's O'Nelly, bro. <laughs> Oh no, get yourself a big stick, get after it. So we got a mat right in front of us. I got my little gambler stinger. So there's a point there, there's a point there, there's some chop grass. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target those little points and those little turns. And the other trick is too, yeah, I wanna hit the points, but I've caught a lot of fish behind people. I used to fish a lot with my buddy Donnie Bass, but I like pitching right in the middle of the joker like just that hollow cavity. I don't know if they're swimming around or if they're buried in there. And then you'll notice too, like I'm popping the, the bait up a couple times, just kind of lifting it to the ceiling of the mat. A lot of times you'll get bit when you're just kind of lifting the bait or suspending it right at the top of the mat. I don't know what it is if these fish, I think in fishermen, old Al Lindler, you know, Al Lindler, he always talked about how the fish are looking up. They're always looking up, you know. And uh, I think, I don't know, if the brim kind of use that as cover or if the minnows are up there and then the brim's up there and then the bass look, but you just hit those edges and then you save yourself one pitch or one punch for the middle, but always give it a few flicks up and down. And if it, the water's really cold, obviously we're in summer, so it is not cold. But if it's really cold, suspend that bait under the mat, under like the roof of the mat for a minute and uh, just let it dangle there, dude, and just see if you get ticked. Oftentimes, too, you'll get ticked by like brim and stuff, and it's gonna let you know like, hey, dude, there's, there's bait in here. Like along with here, I'm going <laughs> Like that's also a good sign. If you hear these mats like kissing, there's brim under there. But if you get ticked by some brim, it's like, huh, they got something to eat.
not gonna go with a salad either, but let me show you what I'm rigging up. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but at the same time, some of you guys are like beginning punching, so let's go through it. So first things first, we got a Snelled. It's a four-aught um, Strike King Hack Attack hook, and I want Hog Tech one and a half. I got double bobber stoppers on there. That's a trick my buddy Donnie taught me. Um, let me let you know something. Usually I'd have two rods set up. I'd either have one and a quarter to one and a half, or I'd have a two or a 1.75 and a one and a half. But sadly, let me show you this. I'm gonna have to hit up my boy uh, TK Custom because I went and cracked this morning my my Corrado 200E, like the outside. And what that does is that causes the, um, the drag to slip. So that was actually a really sad moment for me because I love that reel, but we'll get her fixed. But, I like having those two setups because some of the stuff is sparser, some of the stuff is thicker, and being able to pick up another rod and just start kind of going after it is a lot better than trying to retie weights every time you make a stop. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this, and it's a classic Texas rig. I have a Gambler Stinger, uh, black. We talked about it in one of the older videos. Um, green pumpkin, black, blue, kind of the best of both worlds. Water semi-clear, semi-stained. And you're gonna put the hook right in the head and measure it about a quarter inch and pop it out. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna thread. There's a little keeper on there. You're gonna thread that so it kicks out just above the bait right there. And then it's a classic Texas rig. You just embed the hook. Um, these stingers, the hook does pop out pretty easy, but you also miss less fish because of it. And then these have a jointed tail, so I'm just gonna pull that apart. And that right there is our punching rig. On the one and a, the one and a quarter or the, the 175 or two ounce that I have, usually I'd have like a BB Cricket or something super compact that I can kind of either be finessed with with the one and a quarter or slip through the thickest, gookiest stuff like with that two ounce or that 1.75. But let's get back after it. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> That's another four pounder, boys. If you don't like punching, uh, dislike this video because that is what punching is made of. And I'm going to hit my spot lock because there's more. There's something about braid and that stuff right there that makes these guys set up just the way I like them. You gonna go back to your home? That's freaking cool. And she's right where she should have been. It got a little bit like thicker and you had a little isolated dome. What's interesting too, I'm throwing you tips left and right. I guess that was the point of this video. This stuff's a little deeper at six, seven feet of water or so. It might be three or four when you get in a little further. But what you wanna do when you pitch out, you're not always gonna feel the tunk. Sometimes they just hold it. In shallow water, it doesn't matter because you reel up and your rod starts bending. But in deeper water like this, you almost have to, to reel down and make sure you reel down. Otherwise, if you set the hook on what you think is tension, it might be kind of like laying the, the braid over the grass or something like that. And the fish, you might get lucky and hook them. I've done it quite a few times, but oftentimes they're gonna come off because you don't get a good hook in them. So if you're fishing a little bit deeper punching stuff, I'd say six plus is really kind of the key, especially when you get eight to 10 and those the main river mats are in like 12 feet of water and they're just a big dome. You gotta reel down on these fish. Otherwise you're gonna, you're gonna miss a lot of fish. You're gonna get frustrated and don't get frustrated. This kind of fishing is a grind, but it is fun. That feels like a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you're pinned, huh? I don't even know it's under there. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Mikey Dunk, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh dear, look what we found under the mat. Look what we found. Chill, you got all fight lefty. Dude, that's a five and a half, six pounder. Oh dear. Dude, man, dude, man, what have we done? <laughs> you get her back real quick. You gotta let her go. Oh, stud. All right, let's get her back real quick. God, what a giant. 
<laughs> so the reason she has all that fight in her is literally that's what I brought up. And and I didn't know it was under that. Like that joker was just holding on to it. And I leaned back. That's why I run this is um a Halo 711. It's the heavy actually. Um it, it's a flipping rod, it's their high end, it's the TI but that's why i run that longer rod and that's also why i run the heavy because if i ran the extra heavy i'm worried about like pulling like the hook out of the fish like that fish is pinned dude like when i pulled up this wad of whatever you salad i really miss salad bars that's what i should call the video i miss salad bars. but when i pulled that thing up dude she didn't move like she she was done like just wadded up and done <laughs> It's like it's like a present. You're like digging through the wrapping paper, dude, and like right at the bottom, there it is. Everything you dreamed of. <laughs> Punching will not always be this dudical. Look that up on Urban Dictionary. Dudical. But, but today was insane. Dude, I have such a love-hate relationship with Lake Gunnersville. One day, like, dude, we probably had like 21 pounds. We should have had like 23, 24, but I blew off that four pounder but one day i'll have that then i'll like catch like two fish and flipping's like that flipping mats can be like that be patient like take a breath it, it's not a numbers game sometimes you catch a bunch but it is a big fish game especially as this grass grows and summer goes on one quick note for you too guys um the gambler tournament is going to be out here in october and this is going to be a pattern that's going to play flipping mats these mats are going to be developed there's going to be a lot more fish in it it's going to be it's going to be fun so come out i might actually help to run it in that so come out and say what's up at the gambler tournament it's in october you can sign up at uh, www.gambler-lures.com but dude punching epic like it is so much fun you got heavy braid you got a big old rod you got a big weight and you go kerplunk and then they go thunk and you go ah! it's it, it's intense but take some of those little tips like those little nuances you'd be amazed how much of a difference they make when it comes to getting bites like looking at the way the cover's set up looking at how the mats are rolled how you're pitching the bait what you're doing when you catch a fish because there might be a few more scattered around because they're usually in like little groups just the little things that you can do because you don't get a lot of bites so taking advantage like to the full utmost extent of your time on the water like what you're doing when you're actually punching these mats as well as when you catch a fish you know maybe marking it on the graph you know hitting your spot lock so you're not drifting past what could be more fish so all things that that really kind of change the game we sometimes at least me i overlook details and those details matter when it comes to kind of close quarters high detailed fishing because that's what this is but magic setup of the day and actually this is going to play in fall too it's a gambler stinger um we talked about it in some past videos that black blue green pumpkin if the water's semi clear or a little bit stained you can't beat it because these fish are eating brim dude like it is a perfect mimic for those little like blue tails on those bluegills and that goes to the mats pretty clean the only trick is it does get tore up pretty easy but i kind of like that because i think it's a little softer bait so the hook will pop out a lot of these fish tend to like grab the bait and hold it and you don't even know they're there especially in some of the deeper stuff so having something where that snell pops out really easy it's annoying you get hung up a lot you, you know like you're pulling a lot of grass you kick that hook out but like that that one first giant that we caught that was all about having a soft bait and a snail, 100%. Equipment for the video, if you guys want to go punching, um, I have a 711 Ti Heavy. Uh, it's a longer rod. Basically, in general, though, you just need a longer rod, um, 7.6 or longer. I like 7.9, 711, maybe not 8 foot. That's a little too long for me, at least. Um, high speed reel, this is a 721. Sadly, dude, I cracked my my Corrado on that four and a half. I don't know how I did that. that was stupid but whatever it happens but high speed reel 65 to 80 pound braid today i had 65 i started with 80 um but i cracked that reel so i had a backup reel i have 65 this is power post slick i think v2 on here um one and a half ounce tungsten this is a hog tech double bobber stoppers and then snell that hook dude it's a hack attack four rot and then get yourself a stinger and start dobbing in this stuff because dude, there are some giants, as you saw, that your day might not be like that, but dude, you can have days like that. There are Mondos in here, dude, and it's only gonna get better. And it's a great way to fish in summer, dude. It's, it's so much fun picking this apart, but bring your buff, because I don't know if you can see it, there are gnats everywhere, bugs, dude. The bugs are getting me. 
I'm like a tweaker, dude. The bugs, bro. The bugs. Thank you guys for supporting the videos. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. If you got anything to add to the technique, drop it in the comments box. I'll put links to everything at Tackle Warehouse down in the you know, description box so you guys can check stuff out, see if it fits what you want to do. And I will, I will, I will pet bog for you. Poor bog. It's like 87 degrees. He can't be out here. He'd be too warm, dude. But I will give him a pet for you. We'll see you back out here. Tight lines.